Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Got a problem with your form not updating? You got two forms open side by side, maybe customers and orders, right? You change the order information and you want the total over here on the customer form to update. Well, today I'm gonna to show you how to do that using Recalc and the Unactivate event. Today's question comes from Melanie in San Mateo, California, one of my Platinum members. Melanie says, how can I get my access form to refresh automatically when I return to it? I use it to track jobs and invoices for my landscaping business, but I have to close and reopen the form to update things like customer credit after making changes and other screens. Is there a way to make it recalculate on its own without hitting F5 every time? See, sometimes I get a bunch of questions like yesterday's video and today's video and tomorrow's video and I string them all together, right? So we talked about this a little bit yesterday. In yesterday's video, the over credit limit, I showed you how to calculate this credit limit here. But if you go over, you got the customer form open and you go over to the order form and you change something, when you come back here, this doesn't update on its own unless you manually hit refresh. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do today. Now this is gonna be a developer level video. What does that mean? Well, it's gonna require a tiny little bit of VBA code, but don't panic. If you're new to VBA or you're scared of VBA, go watch this video first. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know to get started. Okay, so in the last video, I showed the expert users how to calculate that credit left right there. But if we go in here and we make a change, let's say this becomes 10 of those instead, right? When we come back here, this doesn't update. There's a couple things you can do. You can hit F5, you can go up here and hit uh, refresh or refresh all, but we don't want to have to do that manually. We want the code to do that for us. That's why we learn how to become programmers to automate stuff like that. That should be simple, right? Now there's a couple ways you could do it. You could do it in the order form when this guy closes. That's one way to do it. I'm gonna show you that real quick, just in case you don't know. And there's nothing wrong with this method. Um, go to events, go to either on close or on unload. Doesn't matter for one of these. I'll use, uh, where's on close? Where are you? Right there. Okay. Now in here, we would just say forms customer F dot refresh like that. Or you could use dot recalc, which we're going to talk about more in a minute. All right. Close that, close that, close this. Now, if I come in here. All right, change this to let's say one and then close it and oh wait 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 it's not paid let's make it not paid there we go okay and now you can see it worked okay uh you know come over here go into orders let's say he pays this and now it updates automatically for you that's one way to do it but you run into this problem too ah eh see they can't find the form because we close the customer form. So there's a couple ways you can handle that. You can just throw in some simple error handling on error resume next, which in this case is fine. I'm okay with that if it's just something simple like this where you know it's gonna throw an error if that form's not open and you don't care, just whatever, just ignore it. Or you can use my is loaded function. Is loaded's in my code vault, is a form loaded. It's real simple, there it is. Right, this is the kind of stuff you find in the code vault gold members, right? Good stuff, a lot, tons of stuff in here. But I generally only use this loaded if, if I care about whether it's open or not because I'm gonna do something different if it's open versus if it's closed. In this particular case, but in this particular case, I don't care if it's open or not. All right, if it's open, go ahead and refresh it. If not, doesn't matter, just don't do anything. All right, but I think better than putting it here a better place to put it is in the customer form itself. Okay, so let's let's get rid of that code. Come back over here, save this, and we're gonna put it in this guy, okay? So that whenever you switch back to it from the order form or anywhere else, it'll recalculate these fields. And this would be good if you're like switching back and forth between this, right? Let me move this over here so you can see it, right? Let's say this guy becomes 100. Or a thousand or whatever, All right? So this value changes. If as soon as I come back over here, you want this to update at that point. Because I personally like to switch between forms a lot. So how do we do this? Well, this form has events also, right? 
Now, if you look in here, there's an on got focus event and there's also an on activate event. Now be careful because on got focus will only run if this guy has no controls. I talk about this in my requery versus refresh video because technically the control gets the focus, the form doesn't. So what you wanna use is the on activate event right down here on activate. This happens anytime you switch back to this form. Okay, so come in here. And all we're gonna say in here is me.recalc. Now you could use refresh. You could use requery if you wanna requery the whole set. Um, refresh, refresh is all of the data, pulls a fresh new copy of the record in from the table. Recalc just recalculates the equations and the formulas and stuff like that dsum, right? And in fact, someone the other day asked me, hey, why don't you ever use recalc? I do occasionally, I almost never use it, but once in a while I will. Right, especially if you got a big set of records, you know, if you want to, you don't want to pull a whole ton, ton, ton of fields in, and you're working over a network. Me.recalc just says keep the data you got in the form, but recalculate all the equations, and that would be sufficient for this particular example. All right, so let's debug, compile, let's close it, save it, save it, close it, open it, all that good stuff. All right, here's that. Let's go back to the orders. All right, now let's fix this. Let's make it one. All right, you gotta move off of this record so this updates, because then now if I click over here, that updates, okay? If you, if you don't leave this record, if you're sitting right there, this still won't update because this hasn't updated yet. Now I show you how to do um, events inside like the after update event. You could do a, a refresh in the after update event of that field, which I often do with order form type stuff because you want this to update. See, right now it's kind of confusing because I go to here, this still hasn't updated yet. So I'll put an I'll put an after update event in each one of the fields that uh, that this calculation relies on. So put in put a you know a refresh in here, put a refresh in here, and then this will always update every time this gets changed. Right? As it is now, the way the database is, it doesn't do that. And if I click over here, now it updates. And you can see the on activate fires. When I leave this form and come back to this one, it recalculates this stuff. See, it's pretty cool stuff, right? All right, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to pop up a warning message if the user's over their credit limit. All right, now that's easy to do, but what if you're gonna add a bunch of different orders for this customer? You gotta add two, three orders, and you don't wanna be bothered with that every time. Now watch, the second time I click it, it doesn't bother me. Oh, look at that. Huh? And I'll show you how to do something like that with global events. Like for example, let's say you got an import routine that you run every morning, right? The first time you run it, it'll do it. The second time you run it, third time it's gonna say you've already done this dummy. So you know you already did it. We'll talk about that and I'll show you how to do all that stuff in tomorrow's video. So that's gonna do it. That's gonna be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for some more. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there, just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. 
Gold members get the previous perks plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.